Hi everyone, so in this video I'm doing a random prompt and a random color palette and I'm putting them together to make a small little illustration to kind of challenge myself um, and just to kind of do an idea that I wouldn't have thought of on my own and to work with a color palette that I wouldn't have normally chose. So I just wrote out a bunch of prompts from a random, no, artprompts.org because I got some new watercolors and I want to try them out and I want to do little illustrations and also random color palettes to kind of help me um, kind of test the color mixing with this set and maybe to, to get me outside of my usual colors that I tend to paint with. So I'm going to choose a random prompt from here and a random color palette and then I'm going to make something from it. Let's mix it up. Okay, here's one. A person tampering with dark magic. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna generate color palette and I have to go with it. Okay, I kind of like that. It kind of looks like, um, it reminds me of a, of a jungle where this is the water, maybe the, that's water too in like plants. So a person tampering with dark magic with this color palette. I'm going to be using this B watercolor paper that I have. I really like the texture of it, so I'm going to be using it. And I think I'm going to make the illustrations half the size. I want, to, I want them to be nice and small so they don't take too long. And I just want to experiment with my watercolors, like I said, so I'm going to cut them all in half. Like you already saw, I'm using my um, some new watercolors that I got in a new palette I got off of Amazon. This was the palette that kept popping up when I uh, was searching for it, and I was stuck between the large and medium, but I decided to get the medium. And I've been using the Windsor Newton Cotman watercolors for a really long time, maybe a couple of years. I've just never really branched out from that. Um, just because they were they were pretty decent quality for the price and a lot of people use them and they're really easy to find. But I decided I wanted to try some more expensive watercolors. My main reason is so that it my paintings don't look so chalky because a lot of the time with the cheaper paints, like the student grade Cotman ones, you have to take a lot of the paint to make a dark enough color and this kind of makes your painting look chalky and it starts to become more opaque and not look as nice as the more pigmented professional quality watercolors where it doesn't take a lot of effort to get the pigment off of the paint and it they just go a long way and they're just um, a lot more they have a lot more color in them and I think um, they have just like a lot more value except for like each each tube of paint is an investment but the tube of paint lasts a really long time. I actually had two good quality watercolor tubes from before when uh, I made this video a while ago. It might have only been a year ago, I'm not sure. Maybe like two years or a year and a half where um, I, I took out my dad's old watercolors and he had a bunch of Windsor Newton Cotman ones, which is what I uh, what I've just been using for for the last uh, for the last little while. And he also had two artist quality uh, Windsor Newton colors. It was um, Windsor Red and I think Burnt Sienna, or was it Raw Sienna? I can't remember. But I've been using those along with the Cotman ones. So I have those in my palette along with all the other good quality ones that I picked up from DeSeres. I'll show some footage of them somewhere in this video.
I definitely struggled with this painting. I liked the way that the line art looked um, once I sketched it out and had it all ready for colors, but as soon as I went to color it, I completely messed it up. I think my biggest problem was that I had red and green, and when you mix red and green together, you get brown or like gray or just like really dark, muddy colors. So that's what happened with the first, the first attempt at this painting. I actually redid it once, so I have two versions of it, the one that's super muddy and the cleaner, lighter, brighter one. So basically a big mistake I made on the other one was layering red on green. It just looked really muddy and I shouldn't have layered those colors together unless I wanted that muddy look, but I didn't want it. I actually kind of like the color of the person's robe better in the first one compared to the, to the newer version. I don't like the color that much in the new one, but I do like the way I made the lighting better and I like the overall color choices a bit better too. I think I kind of deviated a little bit away from the original color palette that I got from that uh, color palette generator website. I think I uh, added a couple extra colors, but I kind of tried to keep it with that red and green and uh, turquoise sort of look. I added black or gray, of course, because I feel like that's not really a color, but it kind of is. I wasn't like being too strict with myself because that color palette, uh, they were all mid-tones and they were all the same value and if I made them all exactly those colors, the drawing would have looked horrible. So I kind of took the hues of those and made them lighter or darker and I mixed them together a little bit. And I also added, um, I, th I feel like I added purple or like uh, some, some bluer colors, some grayed down blues, but I just used that palette to guide the painting. It wasn't like a hard rule. was a person tampering with dark magic and the color palette I got actually worked super well with the with the prompt because I got red and green which are complementary colors and they can look kind of scary when you put them together I'm actually surprised I didn't make it look like Christmas I don't think it looks like Christmas but I thought red would be perfect to have this ominous window casting a light on everything I know that the lighting wouldn't really look like that exactly if it was in real life but I made it stylized I wanted it to kind of be this like harsh contrast, just like a cartoony effect sort of thing. And it definitely took a lot of control with the watercolor to make sure that I um, did the colors properly for where I put the lighting and that I didn't go over the line. Um, I do find with these better watercolors that you don't get as much as that outline around the area where you put water. Um, they are easier to control almost, but the thing about this, this watercolor paper that I'm using is that once you put the colors down, they don't budge, they don't move at all, so I might want to try using something else because if you make a mistake, you can't get it off the paper. Like, it's so difficult. It's B watercolor paper. It might not be the highest quality one. Also, um, I tried to do perspective with this and um, I must have not paid close enough attention to what I was doing because I made the shelves really inconsistent. The shelves on the left are fine, but the shelves on the right you kind of start seeing the tops of them too early, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. I only think you'd notice it if I told you or if you're actually looking for it. So that's the one thing I like actually messed up on that doesn't make sense, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed seeing me do this little watercolor painting. I had a lot of fun making this this little painting. Um, I've been wanting to do more like smaller scenes and I just want to get better at watercolor and better at um, just like just like making like a cohesive illustration. 
I think the composition works on this because of the of the circular window, the cauldron, and the person. It's kind of like like a triad sort of thing, and the shelves kind of balance each other. Um, I, I do, I, I am quite happy with how this turned out. Of course, there's things that would change, but I'm never going to be 100% happy with anything, so this is a really good level of um, being happy with the drawing. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any prompt ideas, let me know. Or if you have any color palettes you want me to try, let me know and I'll try to include them in future videos. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos from me and turn on the notification bell because YouTube can be pretty unreliable with showing you your subscriptions um, and like the video too. So thank you so much for watching again and I'll see you in my next video.